right, so if we we're going to find questions in calculus, let's have a look at a typical function f of x. All right, so if I've got f of x, which is a function of x being a cubic function, let's say 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus 7x plus 4. From this here, I know that this cubic function, firstly, some information about it. This value over here is your a value. Now, we can write this in the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx squared, so ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And we can see that that value over there is 4, which is my a value. Now, when the a value is greater than 0, or when it's positive, then the cubic function goes up first, which is a maximum, then turns, goes down, passes some kind of point of inflection, if maybe, and goes all the way down and reaches a minimum before it goes up again. All right. So we're saying that there would be some kind of maximum where the gradient will be equal to zero. And we've got some kind of minimum where the gradient will be equal to zero. And the gradient is found by, by taking the derivative of x. So the next thing we need to understand is what is the derivative of f of x if you give them something like this. Well, the derivative of f of x is built on the power rule. The quickest way to find the derivative is to use the power rule. And in this case here, we want to find out the gradient, right? So this is the gradient, which is your slope of this function, which means that as you travel along the slope, every single point has a different slope. So for example, if you're traveling this way, you know that's going to be that slope. And if you keep traveling this way, you can see the slope is getting flatter. Eventually, it will become zero at that point. And then if you're going to a negative, eventually it will become less negative, less negative, and it will be zero again before it goes positive again. So the gradient is changing as x is changing on the x-axis. And so the gradient has a specific function that we want to find. In order to find that, we use the power rule. So let's suppose we have to work out the power rule with the following function. So f of x equals ax squared. All right, when I derive this function, when I derive this function, I take 2 to the front and I multiply it by a. It becomes 2ax, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So I end up multiplying the power by the coefficient, right? So I multiply power, and then I subtract 1. I subtract 1 from that number, okay? So that's going to be 2ax over there. So that's going to be, every single time I have to calculate, let's see, I, I do a few of these, right? Let's suppose on this side of here, I put f of x, and let's say on this side here, I put the derivative of f of x. If I've, if I've got 2x, and I derive this, 1 goes to the front, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 minus 1 is 0, and so that becomes x to the power of 0, and 1 times 2 is 2, so I'm left with 2. If I've got 3x, it becomes 3. If I've got negative x, it becomes negative 1. What you notice is that when it's x to the power of 1, it disappears completely. Right? Now the next one, if I've got x to the power of 2, it will become 2x. So 2 goes to the front and then minus 1. If I had 2 in front, then that would become 4x. And if I've got 3x squared, for example, this will become 6x. If I've got negative 4x squared, this will become negative 8x because the 2 multiplies by 4, and then we minus 1. And every time we derive, the power reduces by 1 anyway. And if it is power of 1, then it disappears. So if it's a cubic, it's going to become a square. So let's have a look at a set of cubes as well. So if I've got x cubed, it's going to become 3x squared. If I have 4x cubed, this will become 12x squared. And if I've got negative 5x cubed, 3 times 5 is negative 15. 3 minus 1 is 2. So every time we multiply the power and then we subtract 1. Multiply the power in front, right? Multiply, multiply the power in front with the coefficient. And then we subtract 1 from it.
All right, so those are examples of how we would do this power rule. So now I'm going to apply the power rule to this function over here now. And we're going to take every single function and do exactly that. I'm going to take 3 and multiply it by 4. It's going to become 12. And then minus 1. Because 2 times 2 is 4. And then minus 1. And this will be minus 7. All right. So then we got f of x equals now, the moment you have a, a number on its own, a constant, a constant does not have a gradient. A constant can be represented like y equals 4 is basically a line where it goes straight through the number 4. And so it's flat. So it has no slope. So the gradient is 0. So therefore, the derivative of this function here would be equal to 0 because the gradient is zero, it's flat. Whenever you have a constant, it disappears completely when you derive it. All right. I put a small little dash over here at the top, implying that this is now the gradient function. This is a function, a function that represents the gradient, that represents the slope of f of x for all values of x. All right, so now that I've got this, all right, I've got this derivative 12x squared minus 4x minus 7. The next question is, okay, well, I've got the gradient function. Let's find out the gradient maybe at a certain point. So I can provide x values for this function, and I can find the gradient at certain points. Let's suppose I'm given the question to find the gradient at x equals 3. All right, so let's say I'm asked. Find the gradient for this function at x equals to 3. So all I have to do now is find the derivative at 3, replacing x with 3. And it will give me a specific number, which I put on my calculator. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 12 is 108. Minus 12, minus 7 comes to 89. So 89 will be the gradient of this function at that point. And when you draw this up, and we know that this is the y-axis and the x-axis, and specifically the x-axis is what I'm looking for. If I have the x-axis somewhere like that, we're saying, okay, well, what is the gradient at x equals to 3. So 3 would be over here. Let's say here. In this case, the gradient will be negative. So that's okay not there. We could either lie over here or we could lie over here. Because if I go up here, I would end up with a slope of 89. Call it here. Or this side. I would end up with a slope of 89. All right, so that's the two possibilities of gradients. Now, when we sketch this function, what we can do is there are ways we can actually sketch this function. So if I have to sketch this function, let's suppose I try to sketch this function by making x equal to 0. If I make x equal to 0, then I'll be left with 4. So that's going to be my y-intercept. If I have to factorize this function, or try and find the x values, the x intercepts, I could also do that. Another possibility is I could make my gradient equal to 0. If I make my gradient equal to 0, then what is it going to do? I'm making my gradient equal to 0, it's going to give me my turning point. So I can get that coordinate, which is the turning point over there, and I can also get that coordinate, which is the turning point over there. So I could take this function and make it equal to 0. So when I do that, if I take f dash x and I make it equal to 0, I'm implying that 12x squared minus 4x minus 7 equals 0. And what does that mean? That means that my gradient or my slope is equal to 0. Where is my slope equal to 0? Over there and over there. 
which means if I solve for x, I'm going to find the respective x values where that takes place. So by solving for x here, I'm going to find those x values with those gradients of 0. When I look at solving for x for this, all right, um, 12 minus 7 is going to give me 5. So definitely, I'm not sure if I can factorize this function. But let's say I put it in my calculator or in the quadratic formula. So I'll go minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. We want to find the x values for this function, the 2a. So that's going to be minus minus 4 plus minus the square root of minus 4 squared, which is b squared, minus 4 times 12 times negative 7, all divided by 2 times 12. That'll become 4 plus minus and we can put all of this in the calculator. It'll be 16, we get a 4 squared, 16, minus 4 times 12 times negative 7, comes to like 352 over 24. So 4 plus the square root of 352 divided by 24 comes to 0 0.9. 0 0.948 or if you put the other way around so minus the square root of 352 divided by 24 will become negative 0 0.615 all right so those are my two possible x values and that's where you cut the x-axis at that specific point so just to guide me to sketch this function out. So when I sketch this function, I have a guideline on how it would look. If I put my y-axis and my x-axis in, I did state that my y-intercept would be coming straight from there, which is 0, 4. That's my y-intercept. And then I've got these x-intercepts. I've got 0 0.948 and 0. I've got negative 0. Uh, 615 and 0. Alright, so those are my x intercepts. So if I have to quickly plot that, those values, let's say 0 0.9 would be over here, 0 0.948, and negative 0 0.615 would be over here, and 4 obviously is over here. So on this specific x, I haven't found the y. Value, I can find the y value, the specific y value, by substituting that back into the original function, back into the original function. If I take each of those x values and I change it into 0 0.948 and negative 0 0.615, it'll shoot out the y value, right? So that's y value. And so that will give me the exact coordinate, all right, which is that particular y component, which is not zero, but um, specifically where it turns. Okay, so I did say this would be an x-intercept, but it's not an x, it's an it's a x component of the turning point. All right, but anyway, the function is going to increase, and it's going to reach, it has to increase first, because the a value is 4, so it has to go up first. It's going to increase, it's going to reach a maximum at that point, right, but it needs to cut 4 after that, so it's going to turn higher than 4, and then cut through 4, and then turn again, reaching a minimum at that point. Now, we don't have the specific y values for this, but we can also find those y values. In order to find those y values, then this function would then shift probably down or up for more accuracy. So let's say I substitute these two functions. I say f of 0 0.948, what will that be? And if I say f of negative 0 0.615, what would that be? This means I'm going to replace x with 0 0.948, and I'm going to replace x with negative 0 0.615. If I go ahead and do that, I've got 4 multiplied by 0 0.948, and I cube it, minus 2 times 0 0.948, which I then square, minus 7 times 0 0.948 plus 4 
comes to negative 1.025, negative 1.026, actually. All right, and if I change that on my calculator, keeping my brackets as it was, into the other x component for the turning point. Remember, this is turning point we're looking up. So I'm changing x into zero point negative zero point six one five. Negative zero point six one five. I get 6.618. 6.618. So this graph is not exactly accurate, which means that we have to fix it. Right? But we definitely got the x component. So let's see if I find the y component specifically, what that would look like. Okay. So these are the y values. These are the x values and these are the y values. X values and y values. And together they form a coordinate. And the coordinate is, by the way, what are these? Turning points. All right, so these are turning points, which means that I'm going to go 0 0.948, but down into the negative over there. So that's going to move all the way down to there, right? That's going to be negative. This is now more, this is accurate compared to the other one, but it's still a sketch. So there's the coordinate over there, that point there, which is going to be negative 1.026 and then negative 0 0.65 goes up 6.618 which is maybe over there 6.618 which brings me which moves that dot up there so if I move that dot down there and redraw it now so if I redraw it remember the the function is got an a value which is positive and positive implies go up first down, then go up again. Go up, go down, then up again. All right, so that's what that means. So we're going to go up, and we have to turn at that point. So what are these? These are turning points, right? We said that, right? I'm going to turn there, and I'm going to go down, all the way down, up through four, and turn again there, and go up. All right, it will cut the x-axis at specific points we got one two and another point of the day and to find those x components we have to obviously solve for x for this function and solving for x would be a different story altogether so overall we are given this function which is f of x right we find the gradient function which is this one here and with the gradient function we can change x into any number and specifically, it says here, when x is equal to 3, the gradient is equal to 89. So when x is equal to 3, it'll be like here somewhere. We're saying that the gradient at this point, the slope at this point, will be 89. And the gradient at the other points is 0. That's these ones here. The turning points, remember, the gradient is 0 because the line is just about turning before it goes into a positive or negative space after that. All right, so a quick summary of that first part of the